Okay, so to finish off this section, uh, we need to look at some reactions of oxidation and reduction of substituted benzenes. So first let's look at oxidation. So we can have oxidation of alkobenzenes. For this to work, we must have at least one benzylic proton. So if this is an alkyl benzene, this position here is the benzylic position, and that would be a benzylic proton. So remember, benzylic is next to the ring. Okay, we can have an aromatic proton, which is an, a proton on the ring. Benzylic is next to the ring. Anything further out here would just be an alkyl proton. So this is alkyl, this is aromatic, and this up here is benzylic. Okay, so if I want to look at what that reaction would look like, if I take toluene, which is just methyl benzene, and react that with a strong oxidizing agent, like potassium permanganate, KMnO4, what it does is it oxidizes that whole side chain off, to a carboxylic acid. And now the nature of the side chain doesn't matter as long as it has a benzylic proton, so you can do the same thing with ethyl benzene, and you get the exact same compound because all the other carbons are just cleaved off as the benzylic position is the one that gets oxidized. So I can do it once again with isopropyl benzene, which is called cumene, I get the exact same product again. The product of this is always benzoic acid. Now, however, if I have t-butyl benzene, and I treat that with potassium permanganate, I get no reaction. And the reason that there's no reaction here is because there are no benzylic protons. Now the opposite, we can also look at reduction reactions. So we can look at reduction of aryl ketones to form alkyl benzenes, and there's two different methods for doing this. The first one is called the Clemenson reduction. And the Clemenson reduction, we take an aromatic ring with a carbonyl near it, If you react that with a zinc mercury amalgam and HCl, and then we heat it, what happens is that carbonyl gets reduced off and gets replaced by hydrogen. So there are two new hydrogens there where there used to be a carbonyl. Now there's another method for doing that that's called the wolf kishner reduction. And the Wolf-Kishner reduction does the exact same thing, except that instead of using zinc and mercury amalgam and HCl, we use hydrazine, which is NH2NH2, the name for that is hydrazine, and hydroxide, and heat. And we get the exact same result, where we have two hydrogens added at the place that you had your carbonyl before. Now, before I explain why, look at these two reactions and see if you can tell why it is that we have these two different reactions. Hopefully you thought back to, to our common mantras, and that is that organic chemists want to be able to control everything. And the difference between these two is that this reaction uses acid, and this reaction uses base. So one is an acidic reduction reaction, while the other is a basic reduction reaction. For a simple molecule like acetophenone, as in the case here, it doesn't make any difference. But as the molecules get more complex, there might be other groups in the molecule that react better to acid or to base. So it's important to have the two different methods. We have a third reduction, but now this one is not a reduction of an aryl ketone. This is a reduction of nitro groups. And your product will be an amine.
So if you've noticed up till now, we haven't had a way to put an amine on the ring, but we can put a nitro group on. Now, it will reduce the way that we reduce just about everything else anytime we have multiple bonds, and you can do H2 and palladium on carbon. That's a standard reduction. However, if you have any alkenes in your molecule or carbonyls in your molecule, you'll also reduce those. So there's a specific reduction that works for nitros that won't reduce carbonyls, won't reduce alkenes, and that's by using tin and HCl. So tin and HCl will accomplish the exact same reaction, except that it's more selective.